Welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we are so excited to be introducing our Tada Diorama Butterfly Window Add-on and also our Tada Diorama Simple Hillside and Grassy Inserts. These are awesome new products that work with the amazing Tada Diorama Interactive Die. Now you can have a cute butterfly shaped window opening and some more insert options for your cute scenes. That butterfly can be used on its own too, so let's go ahead and check it out. First, we're gonna take a look at the butterfly window add-on, and we're gonna start off by die cutting the main base piece from the Tada diorama. Then we can take that gorgeous butterfly and center that into the main base piece. We'll hold it in place with some low tack tape and run it through the die cut machine. And this is gonna give us not only a butterfly shaped window, but also a gorgeous butterfly that can be used on its own, or you can also add it in to your Tada diorama, which Shari is gonna show us at the end of this video. And here you can see that for that butterfly, we also have the little butterfly body that can be layered on top. The next thing that we're gonna take a look at is the brand new Tada Diorama Simple Grassy and Hillside Inserts. And what's awesome about these is that you can have cute new scene options for your Tada Diorama, and they can be mixed and matched with any of the previous inserts for the Tada Diorama. So here is a look at what these guys look like when you put them all together. This is our Tada Diorama with that gorgeous butterfly-shaped opening. And then here you can see both the Simple House Hillside and the Grassy Insert there. And it just adds the cutest design and so now we're gonna get crafty with these new items. And we are gonna start off by creating a Tada diorama. And if you've never made a Tada diorama before, make sure to check out the intro video. We will link it in the description below. I've gone ahead and die cut the main base piece out of that really beautiful rainbow ever after striped paper. And now we're gonna take the Tada diorama butterfly window add-on and we're gonna center that right like we did before, right into the main base piece. And we'll hold that in place with some low tack tape and then we're gonna run that through the die cut machine. And this is gonna give us the butterfly shaped open and it also gives us a really, really cute individual butterfly. And I'm actually just gonna put that aside for later so that I can put it on a different card at a later date. But right now we are gonna be working with that stitched butterfly window opening, which is so cute. So now that we have our window piece, we're gonna form our main base piece. So I'm gonna die cut some of this Rainbow Ever After paper as well, and we're gonna go ahead and have a main base piece that's gonna be the back of our Tada diorama. I'm also gonna cut these side panels out of that same pattern paper so that it all matches together. And so we're gonna die cut two of those side panels. We're gonna put the main base piece and the butterfly window opening off to the side for now, and we're gonna be working on those side panels. And the next thing that we need to do is create the slots in these panels. And in the Tada Diorama die, there are two slot creator pieces, and it looks like this, and they have a little foot on them. So we're gonna take that foot, and we want it to point towards the bigger panel on this piece. So it's gonna go in between the two score lines, and that foot is gonna to point towards the bigger panel. And you'll see there's little arrows pointing down. That's reminding you to line it up at the bottom of your panel, right in between the two score lines. So once you have that in place, you can hold it in place with some low tack tape and repeat the same thing on the other side. So we're gonna point that little foot towards the bigger panel in between the two score lines and then hold it in place with the low tack tape. Then we can take each of these pieces and we'll run it through the die cut machine and that's gonna put the slots in the exact perfect place on both of these pieces. And so here you can see what that's gonna look like and now we have those in perfect placement. Now the next step that we need to do is fold along the score lines that the die created for us. And so we're gonna fold back along those score lines and then also take a bone folder to just reinforce those folds so that you have some nice sharp creases. And we're gonna do this on both of these panels. Now that both of these panels are folded, we can go ahead and bring back that main base piece. And now we're gonna attach the side panels. And we're gonna do that by adding adhesive to that smaller folded part of the panel. So we're just gonna add some nice tape runner onto that. Then we can fold this piece in half and we're gonna make sure that those slots are towards the bottom. So here you can see I'm folding in half, the slots are at the bottom. And then I can go ahead and just line it up with the outside edge of this main base piece. And you'll see that there's a little bit of the main base piece peeking out from the top and the bottom, that's exactly how you want it to look. Once I have that one in place, then we can go ahead and work on the other panel. So we're gonna add some adhesive once again to that smaller folded piece, just like that. We'll make sure that those slots are towards the bottom. And then all we need to do is just butt it up with the other one so that they're perfectly lined up and press down. And now both of these are in perfect placement. And you can start to see what this is gonna look like with that cute little window. 
Now the next thing that I wanted to do is I wanted the outside of the panels to be a different color than the inside. So I went ahead and die cut those side panel pieces again out of this pretty polka dot but with the multicolored dots. And I'm just gonna trim off the biggest piece here. So I'm just doing my paper trimmer, lining it right up with that score line so that the bigger side of the panel has been trimmed off. And then we're just gonna attach those right over. And by using the die cut piece, you'll know that they're the perfect size. So I'm gonna go ahead and just add some tape runner onto these and layer it right on top. And once again, what this is gonna give us is a different colored panel at the front. And then when you open it, you'll get a different color on the inside. So it would have looked cute either way, but this is just a fun way to kind of step up your ta-da diorama. So once again, I'll add some tape runner on that panel and then just layer it right over top. Now that we've decorated this back piece here, we can put it aside and start to work on our butterfly window again. And so the next thing that we need to do for the butterfly window is to add the bands that are gonna help secure it onto your interactive card. So this is the little band that comes with the Tada Diorama die, and I'm gonna die cut it out of that same polka dotted paper that we've been using for the rest of the Tada Diorama. And we're gonna die cut two of those. Then the next thing that we need to do is fold along the score lines that the die created for us on both of these pieces. And you'll see that there's a little score line at the top and the bottom, and we'll fold it on both of these. Then the next thing that we need to do is add some adhesive to those tabs that we just folded, and we'll add it to the top and bottom of one of these pieces. Then we can go ahead and flip our window over. You'll see there that we're looking at the back, and we're just gonna line that up with the little notch. So here you'll see that we're just gonna line up the notch with the notch, and then just kind of center it there right on this piece. Just kind of eyeball it, it doesn't have to be perfect. Then we'll do the same thing with the other band piece. So we're gonna add our adhesive to both of those tabs, and then we can fold back those tabs and line up the notch again. So you'll see how those line up just perfectly, and then we'll make sure it's lined up top to bottom, and then we can press down, and now our bands are securely in place. The next thing that we need to do is work on the inserts. And we're gonna be using some of this spiffier speckles paper that is so gorgeous. I love those gold speckles on it. And we're gonna die cut the two brand new inserts, both the simple hillside and the simple grassy inserts. And we'll die cut this from this gorgeous, awesome pattern paper. And the next step that we need to do is add those inserts into the Tada diorama. And you'll see that these inserts have tiny little score lines at the top and the bottom of each of these pieces. So we're gonna fold back along those tiny little score lines so that all of them are folded on both of our inserts. Once we have all four little score lines folded on both of our pieces, we can start to add them into the Tada diorama. And so you'll see that we're gonna insert it through the slot and then just fold open those little tabs so that they are nice and secure. And you can add them in either order. The grass could be in the back and the hill in the front. You can play around with it and you can mix and match them with any of our previous inserts so you can create your perfect scene. So we're just gonna go ahead and tuck that through the slot. And then as we do, we can open up the tabs and that secures it in place. And now it's already looking so cute. The next step is to feed those side panels right through the bands that we added on the back of our Tada Diorama butterfly window piece. And so we're just gonna feed that right through the band on one side, and then we'll repeat the same thing on the other side. We will feed that band right through, and now you can start to see our Tada Diorama card folding. It is so cute, I love it so much. The butterfly-shaped window just makes me smile. And there you can see, ta-da, we have our cute little scene. So the next thing we need is some cute critters for the scene. So we're gonna use the stamp set Happy Couples and those two little bunnies are just the sweetest thing ever and I feel like they would be adorable in this adorable butterfly scene. So we're just gonna add some tape runner to the bottom and back of the bunnies and then I'm gonna layer them into that back grass so that they have a ton of dimension while looking through that window. Then to go along with our butterfly theme, we went ahead and shopped our stash and the stamp set Kangarific has some super cute little butterflies and trails in them. So I went ahead and stamped and colored and die cut these and we're gonna layer a butterfly on the very back panel. I like layering things on that back panel because even just by adding that little butterfly, it gives it so much more dimension. And then we're gonna also add a little butterfly to the front too. And I think once again, this gives a lot of dimension showing something kind of at every level and you can see how cute that is looking. 
The next thing that this card needs is a sentiment. And the Tada Diorama Heart Window has this really cool stitched banner that I just love. And I'm gonna bring out one of my favorite new stamp sets, which is the Henry's Build a Sentiment Spring. And what's so fun about it is that you can build your sentiment. So I'm going through and just picking out different words that are gonna make the perfect sentiment for my card. And I'm gonna put them on my block and I'm gonna curve them to match the curve of that awesome banner. And that's why I really love this set too, is it's really easy to curve it to match these really cool curvy banners. And so here I have wishing you a, and then we're gonna have happy. And you'll see, I just kind of keep playing around with each of those and then spring. And so I think that sentiment looks really, really cute with this card. And I'm gonna stamp that out in some moonstone ink. And I have to tell you, the moonstone ink is just a perfect match for this new Rainbow Ever After collection. It looks so gorgeous with it. So we're gonna go ahead and stamp that out. And I always stamp out too, just in case I end up needing to die cut another one. Sometimes I'll mess up my die cutting. So I always like to have two ready. So I went ahead and stamped out my wishing you a happy spring. And then now I'm lining it up with that awesome banner die that comes with the Tada Diorama heart window. And then we're gonna go and die cut that and look how gorgeous that banner is. We'll flip it over and add some tape runner to it. And then we can go ahead and layer that onto the Tada Diorama. And I really love it there at the bottom. I just think it's so cute. And you have this beautiful butterfly and then we'll have a gorgeous surprise underneath. I went ahead and trimmed down a card base to be the exact size of the Tada Diorama so that it'll be a cute little mini card. But you can also put Tada Dioramas onto an A2 size five and a half by four and a quarter inch card too. And now you can see just how cute this is looking. I mean, this just makes me smile. It's this cute little mini card. And as you open it up, you get the surprise of Tada! The cute little bunnies and the extra little butterfly inside. I love all the dimension and the sparkles on the grass. Those new inserts look so cute in the Tada diorama and the butterfly shaped opening. I mean, it just makes me smile. It's so cute and gorgeous. I want to make like a million of these. They're just so much fun and so adorable. And now that we have created a Tada diorama with this butterfly add-on, I wanted to use the butterflies on their own. And so to do that, I'm going to create a cute little sky for these butterflies to fly around in. So I've gone ahead and die cut a stitch rectangle out of some white cardstock and I'm going to do some inking with some distress oxides to create a beautiful sky. And I'm starting off here with some cracked pistachio at the bottom and then I'll move on to salvage patina for the middle and then for the darkest part I'm going to use peacock feathers. And I'm going to go back and forth between the colors to make sure that there is a nice blend between each of them and I really love this combo of inks to create a really magical sky. I just use it every spring I bring out these colors and they just make me so happy. They're so beautiful. And so you'll see I'm just going to keep filling in my sky and then go back and forth between my colors to create a nice even blend. To give it even more of a magical feel, I'm gonna take some water in a spray bottle and I'm gonna spray some water onto the sky and then pick up the water with a dry paper towel. And you can see as I spray the water, it just looks so cool. And it just makes me feel like maybe it's like one of those bouquet patterns in the background or just feels really magical, kind of like a cool fairy background. And so I'm gonna do that. And then I'm also gonna add some white splatters. And here I'm using some Copic white or you could use white acrylic paint. I'm adding a little bit of water to it and then picking it up on my paintbrush and just just tapping my paintbrush to create a bunch of white splatters in the sky. Now, once this sky is all done, I'm gonna go ahead and set it aside to dry. And before I was gonna finish this card, I wanted to show you some different ways to use the butterfly on its own. So there, we're gonna take that guy and just put it aside, it's so pretty. And I'm gonna die cut the butterfly out of some white cardstock, and we'll cut the butterfly body that way as well. Then I'll go ahead and take some liquid glue and layer it behind the butterfly body and add that right on top. I like this tone on tone look, but you could also use a light gray, which would be really pretty as a butterfly body or even a light brown too. Now, one of the ways I really like to use this butterfly is to fold the butterfly wings up against the body of the butterfly. And that's gonna give the butterfly wings some dimension. And then I just wanted to create a very quick and easy card. So I'm gonna die cut this with a stitched square. And this is some gorgeous Rainbow Ever After paper. That gradient is so beautiful. And then I'm gonna take a scallop square here and I'm gonna die cut that from some pixie dust cardstock once again to have that magical sparkly feel. And I'm just gonna layer these two on top of each other. And then all I need to do is just layer the butterfly on top. So I'm just gonna add a little strip of tape only to the butterfly body area on the back. 
and I can just peel up that liner paper and add that to the card. And that way it looks like the wings are kind of floating up in the sky. And I also like how the colors of the pattern paper are kind of filling in the details on the butterfly. I think that looks so beautiful. Then all this needs is a sentiment, so I'm going to take one of these fancy folded banners here, and I'm actually going to take out the Kangarific Baby Sentiment add-on stamp set. It has really cute baby sentiments, but it also has a congratulations, and I really love this font. And so I wanted to make this more of like a wedding card, so I'm going to stamp this congratulations here in some minty fresh ink right onto that fancy folded banner. And then we can go ahead and just fold along the folds on this, and it's going to give us this cute little three-dimensional banner. And then once we have those folded, we can just add some tape runner to this and then layer it onto the card. And now this quick five minute card is all done. It's so super cute. It's just adorable. You could do it with any pattern papers and any sentiment. I just think it's so sweet and a really, really fun way to use this butterfly. Now, I love the idea of the butterfly just open like that with the fluttering wings. I think it's so pretty. But I also wanted to show you how you can add some color to behind the butterflies. And these butterflies are going to go on that sky we created earlier. So I've gone ahead and die cut the butterfly twice out of white cardstock. And then I'm going back to my favorite papers here from Rainbow Ever After. And it's this gorgeous gradient. And so I'm going to be using both of the gradients there. So I have two butterflies that will have this really, really pretty kind of blended look to behind them. So all I need to do now is just kind of look through the butterfly and find the perfect spot on my paper. And then I'm just gonna trace the butterfly with my pencil. And then I'll repeat the same thing with the other butterfly. I'm gonna lay it on the paper, kind of moving it around, finding that perfect spot. And then once again, I'm gonna trace that butterfly. Then the next thing that we need to do is take out our scissors and just trim. And I'm going to be trimming along the inside of the line because you want this butterfly to be a little bit smaller so that it's going to layer behind our beautiful detailed butterfly. And I'll repeat this with the other paper too. And you can really cut these really messy because no one's ever going to see this butterfly layered behind. But I mean, oh my goodness, is that not the most gorgeous thing? Oh, I love it so much. So now I'm going to add some liquid glue with my glue tube to the back of the butterfly. And then I'm going to go ahead and attach that on to my pattern paper pieces that I cut out with my scissors. And so I'm just going to layer that. And now you can see how we've added color directly behind the wings instead of just having the wings popped up. So they're two cool looks and both are gorgeous. Now you'll see here I had a little extra pattern paper sticking out. So I just went ahead and took my scissors in there and just trimmed off any of the excess. My liquid glue hadn't dried yet, so that made it really easy to do. And it's quick and easy that way. That way I'm not trying to be too perfect with my cutting because I can always go in and just trim off any of the excess, just like I'm doing here. Next, I went ahead and die cut the bodies out of some dolphin cardstock, which is a really, really light gray. And I liked a little bit of the contrast between the butterfly body and the wings. And so I'm going to add some liquid glue on the back of those and then just layer those in to both butterflies. And I think these butterflies are so pretty. I just love them so much. I'm just so ready for spring. I think it's just so gorgeous. And now you can see how they're going to look on our magical sky that dried while we were making our five minute card and these cute butterflies. So I'm laying these onto my scene just to kind of see how I'm going to like them to look. And then I'm using a Henry's Build a Sentiment sentiment. And one of the reasons I really like using this is that I can build it to fit exactly in the spot that I have for my sentiment. So I'm going to go ahead and stack these to say wishing you a happy Mother's Day. And I'm going to stack them in perfect placement so that they're going to fit in that kind of skinny area right there between my butterflies. And so I'm going to go ahead and stamp those right into the scene. And these are just so gorgeous. Gorgeous. Once I have that stamp there, I can go ahead and start adding my butterflies on. So I'm going to add some tape runner to the back of these and then layer these so that part of the butterflies are kind of going off the side of the card. And I think this is going to make it really look like a big scene that kind of keeps going, maybe filled with like thousands of butterflies. I think that's really pretty. And so I'm just going to layer those on and then I can use my scissors to trim off any of the excess. And I think that's just such a beautiful look. Next, I'm going to take out that Rainbow Ever After paper again to find a coordinating paper. And this purple stripe is just so pretty. So I went ahead and trimmed that down to be a standard size, five and a half by four and a quarter. And I'm going to layer that on to my card base here. And then I can layer those gorgeous butterflies right on top. And I really love the little purple frame around it. I think it looks so pretty. 
The last little step for this card I wanted to do was add some sequins onto it because I thought they would add a little fun sparkle. So I picked out some clear sequins. I'm gonna place them onto my card where I think they might look nice. And then I'll go ahead and pick them up with my jewel picker. And I'm adding a little bit of liquid glue just with my craft pick because I didn't want to add too much glue. I just want a teeny bit behind there. So I added some glue onto a piece of cardstock and then I'll just pick up the glue with my craft pick, put it right underneath the sequin and then place the sequin back down. And this is a really great way to add just a teeny bit of glue to hold these tiny little sequins in place. And now this card is all done. It's so magical with those sparkling sequins and that fun background. And I loved adding the pattern paper to behind the butterflies. Oh, it's just so pretty. And now I'm gonna be recreating a gorgeous card by Audrey. And she started off with some watercolor. And I have to say, I am not a watercolor artist, but I love looking at my friend's watercolor and kind of copying it and it helps me practice it. So here I'm picking out a nice light green. And I'm gonna go ahead and add my some water to my paintbrush and pick up that green and I'm just going to make some kind of like smears onto my card. And I was looking at my friend Audrey's card again to see what it looked like and I'm just going to pick up some more of that green. I had darker and lighter green when it was a little too dark I added a little bit more water and I'm just going to smear all of this paint around and I just think it's going to end up looking so pretty and it made me feel a lot more confident in trying watercolor by being inspired by one of my friends. And so I'm gonna set that aside to dry. And then I'm gonna take out my flower garden backdrop. And I love this die so much. And I'm die cutting that from some of the new algae cardstock. And it is so gorgeous out of this cardstock, but I wanted to have a little bit more detail. And I love doing this on plain colors of cardstock with die cuts. It's just adding some details with your markers. So I'm adding a little bit of a dark green, and then I'm gonna go in with a lighter green to blend it out. And the nice thing about doing this is that these are leaves. So imperfections are wonderful on these. So you just kind of blend it out. It's There's no way to do anything wrong with it because it's going to look amazing no matter what you do. And it's going to give these leaves a really cool ink blended kind of watery look. And so you can see I'm making my way all around the frame, adding my dark marker first, and then I go in with my light marker and I just blend it out just a little bit and I let the light color of the cardstock kind of be the rest of the blend of those leaves. And I think this is looking so cool. And now I'm gonna test it over my watercolor piece that is dry and look at that, isn't that so pretty? I love that both of them have that gorgeous watercolor feel. Now the flower garden backdrop comes with these really cute flowers. So here I've die cut the flowers out of ballet slippers cardstock and I've die cut some more of these extra little leaves that are also included in the flower garden backdrop. And so I'm gonna be adding some color to these as well. I'm gonna add my dark and light green marker just like I did on the flower garden backdrop. And then I'm gonna do a similar idea with these flowers. And by starting off with a color of cardstock, it makes it really quick and easy to do to just blend a little bit of marker on there to give it a nice look. You could also also use a little bit of ink and just blend it onto the side of the die cut just to make it feel a little extra special. Now that we have all of our elements with marker on them and you can see how beautiful they're looking, I'm gonna add a little drop of glue to the base of the flowers and then I'm actually just gonna lay the flower garden backdrop right over top of it. So you'll see there's those little pieces that kind of have like the little triple petals. You can of course leave them like that because they just look like cute little greenery or you can layer the flowers behind them and it gives it such a gorgeous look and turns it into this amazing flower garden. So I'm gonna keep going around my whole flower garden backdrop and adding in these flowers and you can feel the whole backdrop come to life as we do that. I'm also going to add some flowers to those individual stems that we're going to layer in later and then these are the markers that I use for the flowers and for the greenery. So I just wanted to share those because they're a really nice match to those colors of cardstock. I'm gonna add some liquid glue just around the back of the frame because later on I'm gonna pop up some of those flowers and then I'm gonna layer that onto the piece that we watercolored earlier. And this is already looking so gorgeous and like the perfect garden for our butterfly. And to give it a nice frame, we're gonna use the stitched rectangle frames and we're gonna die cut some white cardstock. And I love that the stitched rectangle frame is the perfect size to add a frame to this flower garden backdrop because it means that you can change the color of the frame but still have all of that green greenery and leaves. So we'll add some liquid glue to the back of that and just layer that right on top. And now that we have our flower garden all ready, we're gonna start working on the butterfly and we're gonna do a different technique for this butterfly. 
So we're going to start by die cutting the butterfly out of some black cardstock. And then we're also going to take the butterfly and we're going to trace it onto some more black cardstock. So we'll trace it with our pencil and then we'll go ahead and trim it down with our scissors so that there's the perfect piece here to layer behind the butterfly. So I'm going to cut inside that line and then you'll see that I'm going to go back in and trim off even more so that it perfectly fits behind my butterfly die cut piece. Then I'm gonna take some tape runner and I'm gonna cover the entire base piece. That way we have adhesive showing through all of the holes on the butterfly shape, because we're gonna do an inlaid technique. So you see I'm taking nice care here to make sure I cover that entire butterfly base. And then we can layer our butterfly frame piece right on top. Then the next thing we're going to do is die cut this butterfly out of white cardstock and I'm going to take a full stick post-it and I am going to add this butterfly and also all of the interior pieces onto the full stick post-it so that I have a nice place to hold them in place. Then I'm going to add some color to those little inlaid details. So I'm starting off with a red marker, then orange, then a darker yellow and a lighter yellow. And I'm just going to go back in and kind of blend them all together. And then I can pop off that piece off of the full stick post-it and I can add it into the butterfly. And because we covered the base completely with adhesive, you have adhesive to stick that little piece down on there. And I think it's looking really cool. So I'm repeating the same thing on all of these other inlay pieces. So I'm adding color to all of the ones that are kind of a teardrop drop shape and then I'm leaving the circles plain. And so once we have those color, we can go ahead and just pop them right into the butterfly and look how amazing this is looking already. It's so gorgeous and honestly, it was so much fun to do. I find it so satisfying to like pop in all the little pieces. It feels like a little puzzle and it looks so pretty. And then now I'm gonna take all the little circle pieces. I just left them plain white and we're gonna add those to kind of the outside part of the butterfly, filling in each of those little tiny circles. And you can see just how gorgeous this is looking already. And now I wanna repeat the same thing on the other side. So I'm gonna take my markers and just color in each of the pieces. And I like to do all of the red, all of the orange, all of the yellow, et cetera, because it kind of helps me get through all of my coloring more quickly on all of these pieces. And so I kind of just go back and forth, make sure everything's blended nicely and now I can start to pop all of the little pieces in. I'm going to pop all of the teardra teardrop shape pieces in first and then of course we'll pop in all of the little circles and seeing this butterfly come to life, oh my gosh, it just makes me smile. It's so pretty and so gorgeous and it looks so three-dimensional by adding the markered colored pieces right onto the butterfly. Oh, it's so beautiful. And so here you can see my finished butterfly and then I'm going to add the body and in this case I'm going to die cut it out of some black cardstock as well. We'll add some tape runner to the back of that and then we can just layer that right onto the butterfly and you can see just how gorgeous it's looking. The next step is to add some white gel pen details which I think is going to really help all of those little white circles really pop on the butterfly. And here you can see the finished butterfly. Oh my goodness, it's so beautiful and I had so much fun making it. And now this gorgeous butterfly is ready for her flower garden. So I'm kind of kind of position her where I think she might go and I'm gonna layer in a couple more flowers. And I really loved how Audrey did this because it really helped that flower garden feel really full. And so we're gonna tuck another little flower there that's gonna kind of go behind the butterfly just like that. And then we'll tuck one more little flower at the bottom. And you'll see that I'm just gonna trim off the stem there so that it fits perfectly and I always feel like I'm actually gardening here I'm kind of like pruning my flowers here so I'll just trim off any of the excess and we're gonna fill in some more flowers there at the bottom so that it really fills in the shape for the butterfly I happen to have these black foam squares so it's perfect for adding to the back of our black butterfly and then I can layer her right into the garden and she looks so beautiful now remember how we only added liquid glue to the frame? That was because I wanted to add little foam squares behind all of these little flowers to really make them pop. And I think it looks really, really gorgeous. It gives it so much dimension. So it's a fun way to get some really gorgeous pop on all of those little flowers. And you can kind of see how three dimensional and pretty that is. Next, I'm taking out my favorite stamp set again. This is the Henry's Build the Sentiment, and I'm gonna be stamping out Happy Birthday to You. And so I'm just gonna line those all up in a nice row. And that's what I love about these is that they're the nice rectangular bases that just line up perfectly. So you can just kind of butt them up right against each other, and they just naturally cling to each other. And then we can pick that up with our block. And I'm gonna stamp that in some black licorice ink. 
And then we're gonna die cut that with a sentiment banner. And I'm gonna have it so that the edge of the banner kind of goes off to the side and the little flag is at the end. And you can see I always stamp out two sentiments because I always wanna make sure that I have another one to die cut just in case I didn't like how the length of the banner of this one turned out. So I'm just gonna hold that in place with some low tack tape and then we'll run it through the die cut machine. And now I have a cute little banner that has a flat end on the left and the banner edge on the right, which is a really fun look. I'm gonna add a foam strip behind this because we have a lot of foam popped out things and I wanna make sure the sentiment has some nice pop too. And so I'll just layer that to the back and I can peel up that liner paper and I'm gonna tuck the sentiment so that it kinda of goes underneath that flower and I feel like that kinda of helps the sentiment not just feel like it's flying in the air but it kinda of grounds it into our scene. Then the last step that we need to do is just add a standard size card base. So I have one here that's five and a half by four and a quarter. We'll add some adhesive to that and then we can layer this whole gorgeous scene on top. And I had such a blast creating this card. I love all the dimension it has and all those beautiful colors that we were able to add by using our markers and adding some gorgeous color on them. And it was really fun to watercolor too. So thank you much, so much, Audrey, for this gorgeous design. And next up, Shari has a super cool ta-da diorama and she's going to integrate that butterfly shape into the window opening and it's so awesome so take it away Shari. So I have the new simple hillside inserts and I'm just going to be using the plain hillside today and I'm also using that butterfly window add-on for the tada diorama. I cut two of my hillsides from craft cardstock. Now I have the basic tada diorama back piece and I've cut that from some tide pool cardstock and then I've cut that same shape again from some gummy bears rainbow plaid paper. Now I am using that butterfly window add-on to cut out a butterfly shaped window in this front panel. This is going to give me a leftover plaid butterfly that I can keep for another project. It's really pretty with those beautiful rainbow colors. And I am going to show you how to use this butterfly shape in a different way. For my panels on the sides, I have some yellow spiffy speckles paper. And of course, I'm cutting two of those panels and you can see there are those score lines that the die creates. I am going to go ahead and fold on those score lines so we can see them a little bit better. This helps me kind of visualize which side each of these goes on and it helps me figure out where to cut the little slots. So I have them on the correct side. So on that right side, I'm going to add this little foot shaped piece with the arrows pointing towards the bottom, right along the bottom edge of the paper and that little toe that sticks out pointing towards the front panel. This will cut me two little slots on each of these and you can see the slot that's in the back is a little bit higher than the slot that is in the front. Now I want to decorate these because you see these through that butterfly window and what I wanted to do was decorate them with the butterfly that we cut out. So what I'm doing is I cut another butterfly from some teal spiffy speckles paper and I'm just adding some shading around it with some mermaid ink. This is going to make it stand out a bit more to have this extra shading around the edges. This is going to go inside of my window when my panels are closed. You can see how that stands out really nicely against the plaid. Now I want to add a little bit of ink blending to my panels. So I flip them over, line them up, and I'm just holding them together with a piece of removable tape. Now I have some scattered straw distress ink and a small blending tool, and I'm adding some darker shade to the center. You're going to see when I layer this butterfly over there, you're going to see some of this darker shade through the openings in the butterfly. So you see how I'm going to keep pulling that over there and adding more ink until I get it looking the way I want. So I have the light yellow at the outermost edges of those openings and that darker yellow closer to the body of the butterfly. That's looking pretty good, but I wanted to add a little more color. So I'm pulling out the abandoned coral distressing and I'm just going to add a little bit to the center and it kind of gives this really cool glow to those openings in the butterfly. Now to place that butterfly in the right place, I've added some removable tape to the front of my panel. I flipped it over so we're looking at the back. 
Then I'm going to take my two yellow panels that are still taped together on the back and I'm going to line those up. And these are just held in place with those two little pieces of tape you see in those notches. This will help me put my butterfly in the right place on those panels. But first I need to cut it in half so that it can split in the center. And I will just do this with my paper trimmer right down the center. And now I can glue each of these sides of the butterfly directly to those yellow panels of the Tada diorama. And I'm using liquid glue to do this so I make sure it's nice and stuck down. It won't get caught on anything when we pull those panels open. Of course, I need to do the same thing to the other side. And now you can see when those panels are closed, we have a full butterfly. Now I can pull this away from that removable tape because that was just to hold it in place temporarily. And I can also pull the tape off the back of these two pieces and separate them. Now to move on to my pieces on the inside. I cut the two simple hillsides from craft cardstock to have the look of a sandy ground or a dirt ground. And I'm adding some shading to this as well. So I started with my tea dye ink and now I'm pulling in some vintage photo. And I'm just adding that darker color towards the bottom. I did decide that I wanted to add some texture to these as well. So you can see I, I don't have it on there just yet, but I did decide to add some paint splatters to these to make it look more like dirt. But first what I'm doing is I am going to glue some pieces to this background panel I'm gluing these little trees from the Kangarific add-on, and I've just placed my hill about where it's going to be. So I used the slot as a guide to kind of place this hill about the correct height so I can see where to put my trees. So once I have those kind of figured out where I want them to be, I'm going to pick them up with my tweezers and add some liquid glue and glue them directly to this back panel that's cut from that Tide Pool cardstock. So the bottoms of these trees are going to be hidden behind that hill and you'll never see that they're kind of floating into space. Now I can add my yellow panels that I decorated earlier. I'm only adding adhesive to the space between the edge and the first fold. Then I will line it up with the edge of my back piece between the stitching lines on the top and the bottom. And I actually pulled it off because it wasn't quite lined up with the outside edge and I could see it a lot better when it was open. For the other side I can just butt it up against the one that's already there and now I have them lined up perfectly. And here is where I decided to add my white paint splatters to my little dirt hills. So now that those are splattered and dry I can add them to my Tada diorama. I like to fold the little tabs of the hillsides towards me because I think it's easier to work them in that slot and then unfold them once you have them through. And it really doesn't matter because you don't see that part at all. Now before I add my other hill, I want to go ahead and add my big kangaroo that's going to be on the back hill. And I'm making sure I keep that nice and centered between the two trees. Then I can fold the little tabs on the other hill and I will slide that through the slot. Once it's through there, I'll open up those tabs so it stays and doesn't come back through the slot. And then I will do the same to the other side. Now I can decorate my little hill in the front. I did cut out two kangaroos, but they didn't really fit on there to allow my diorama to close. So I decided to go with one. It was a little too full with two of them. And now to add my little butterflies, and this goes along with the butterfly cut out on the front. You can see I added that little purple one directly to the hill. Now this little pink one, I've put on a little strip of acetate and I used some glue dots to stick it to the back of the hill. And then for the sentiment, I'm doing the same thing. I have a little sentiment bubble that says, thank you. 
and I put some glue dots on that little strip of acetate and I'm going to tuck this down and I'm making it pretty low so that it's not hidden too much behind that butterfly window cut. Now I need these little strips here to assemble the rest of my Tada diorama. I've cut two of those, folded them on the score lines, and added some adhesive to the little tabs. And then you can line up that little cut that is in this little strip with the little thumb hole on each side. And then you have just a little strip on the back side of that front panel. Finally, I'm going to take the diorama that I constructed earlier and flip it over and slide each of those yellow panels through that slot that I created. I'll make sure it's nice and lined up and then when you pull each of those panels you get that reveal of that fun scene inside. I am going to put this on a card base so I've cut some spiffy speckles paper with the largest of the outside and stitched rectangles and put that on a card base. Then I can add adhesive to my whole diorama assembly and put that on the card base as well. And how fun is that to pull that butterfly open and see that fun scene inside. I did want to put the first part of my sentiment on the front on a wavy banner and this is a little trick on how to bend a sentiment to match that banner. I'm sticking it to that banner die in the right curve and then I picked it up with my block and now I can stamp it on to a white die cut wavy banner and it is curved to match the curve of the banner. I stamped this towards the right so I can have it coming off the side and I'm making sure there's no adhesive where it overlaps the opening so I'm just rubbing that off and then I'll trim off that left side where it overhangs. So now my card says hopping by to say and then you pull that open and you get those cute kangaroos chasing butterflies inside and I just think that is so cute. Hopping by to say thank you. And I also love that butterfly detail on the front when it's closed. I absolutely love how you added the butterfly tea tail to the front of the Tada diorama and then the gorgeous surprise of the kangarific kangaroos inside. It just makes me smile. This is so much fun, Shari. And we have some incredible cards by the design team. And here Grace wowed me by using our pastel pearlescent vellum to die cut these gorgeous butterflies and add them on to an amazing slimline card. I love how she used the best wishes line border for her sentiment. It's so stunning. This card by Elena is just gorgeous. I love how she used the Radiant Heart backdrop but layered her butterfly over top to give a really cool look. This Tada Diorama card by Maureen is so much fun. The butterfly window is so pretty with that striped paper and then the surprise of all the bears inside. Oh my gosh, it just makes me smile. It's so stunning. This card by Lynette is so pretty. I love all of her mixtures of the Rainbow Ever After paper and the butterfly by the Best Wishes Lime Butter. This is just so gorgeous. This pillow box by Yanea just blows me away. I love how she used the greenery from the flower garden backdrop behind the butterfly. And then this card by Melissa is just so beautiful. The sparkly butterfly is just stunning and I love it with the flower garden backdrop. And then here is the card by Audrey that inspired us to make ours today. It's so beautiful. This card here by Elise is gorgeous. I love how she inked a beautiful rainbow cloudy sky with her awesome butterflies. And then this card by Leticia is so much fun. I love the rainbow body that she added to her white butterfly. It's just gorgeous. So we cannot wait to see your Tada diorama and butterfly cards. So make sure to share them with us. Thank you so much for watching today and I hope you have an absolutely amazing day. Bye.